Hello, everyone. It's me again, Professor Jeremiah Elioso, and welcome to our discussion in macro perspective of tourism and hospitality. And for today, we're going to discuss the tourism and hospitality network and supply components. So our learning objectives at the end of this chapter, you should be able to discuss the, di the direct and indirect components of the tourism and hospitality network explain the tourism and hospitality supply components, compare the different types of tourist accommodations, enumerate and describe the classifications of hotels, and be acquainted with the basic standard requirements for the restaurants. Okay, so let us get started. So the travel industry is a tourism and hospitality network, which includes both the public and private sectors. Travel industry is a composite of the organizations that are involved in the development of production and marketing of products and services to serve the needs of the travelers, according to G. Troy and Mackins, 1997. And you are very much aware of the diversity of the tourism and hospitality industry, as we have discussed with the umbrella of the hospitality and tourism. So here you see the figure three, the direct and indirect components of the tourism network in the travel industry. So this figure identifies both the direct and indirect components of the travel industry. Business and corporations are regarded as components of the travel industry classified as direct providers, support services, and developmental organizations. And actually, we're going to discuss each of these uh, three categories one by one to give you a clearer grasp or a better um, perspective of these different categories of the direct and indirect components. Okay, so let's have first the category one or the first category, such as the travel agency, hotels, retail shops, restaurants, airlines, and ground transportation. Uh, this, we call this the direct providers, okay? And these business provide services, activities, and products that are consumed and are purchased directly by the travelers. They represent the sectors of the industry that are visible to the travelers. So we are very much aware that a traveler would be needing these different services. Whenever they travel, they would uh, need accommodation. They would need restaurants to fulfill their uh, physiological needs. They need uh, different modes of transportation to um, for, for mobility or to um, get to one destination to another. And also they have other necessities or they, they, they need to fulfill their other needs, such as they would be um, buying uh, pasalubong, they would have to go to retail shops for other uh, leisure and entertainment purposes. Okay, so here on the first category, you, uh, you see that the travelers has a direct um, contact with this different uh, establishments and all of these are very much visible to the travelers. All right, let's now go to the, the second category or the support services. They lend support to the direct providers and it includes specialized services such as tour organizers, travel and trade publications, hotel management firms, and travel research firms. Also, let us include the contract laundry, food suppliers, contract food services and it also includes the basic supplies and services such as contract laundry contract for services support services provide goods and services for both the traveler and for organizations that sell goods and services directly but not exclusively to the tourist if you look into the paradigm or the diagram the support services or the, the, the businesses that I have mentioned would have or could have a direct 
contact or indirect contact to the uh, to the direct providers and also the travelers. Meaning to say that the travelers may uh, go directly to these providers or sometimes there is a mediator or middleman who would assist the travelers in the provision of these services. Now, the third one is uh, a little bit different. So the category three is the tourism developmental organizations. So since the first two categories includes planners, or I mean, this is different from the first two, since it includes planners, government agencies, financial institutions, real estate developers, and educational and vocational training institutions. These organizations deal with tourism and hospitality development, which tend to be more complex and broader in scope than the production of a daily travel services. The decisions and results of the tourism and hospitality development are more long-term in nature than the first two categories, which deal more with operators. So the tourism developmental organizations is kind of looking into the macro perspective or there is a more general and long-term effect of their service that they provide to the travelers. And their service are a little more indirect and uh, general. Okay, If we look into the example, um, it was mentioned that um, category three would, or example of business institution, under category three would be the educational and vocational training institution. And one example of this would be the schools, colleges, and universities, training partners such as the TESDA, okay, which provides vocational training for, um, for out-of-school youth, for uh, homebound OFW who have lost their job during the pandemic, um, you see that uh, the, the services of this institution does not directly or the, the travelers does not have a direct contact with this institution. However, uh, their services would somehow assist the tourism developmental organization in such a way that they train people to become industry professionals someday. The government agencies assist the tourism developmental organizations in coming up with the projects, with some of the legal requirements. The real the the financial institutions assist the different uh, tourism related infrastructure and institution in providing for uh, financial assistance into their uh, the needs of the businesses. So you see how it could affect directly the direct providers and indirectly affect the the travelers all right now let's uh, go to the tourism and hospitality supply components and there there's actually uh, five categories let us have first um, the natural resources as the first um, supply components and this includes elements in an area for the use and enjoyment of visitors, such as climate, landforms, terrain, flora, fauna, bodies of water, beaches, natural beauty, and water supply for drinking, sanitation, and similar use. We are very fortunate in the Philippines because we are composed of more than 7,600 islands, and we are blessed and endowed with a lot of natural resources, a lot of um, natural uh, tourist destinations. If you try to look around, the Department of Tourism has been promoting our um, very nice and beautiful spots in, in the Philippines. You see that we have Mount Mayon, we have Boracay, we have Palawan, we have uh beautiful caves of uh, forest and uh, this natural tourist destination offers 
um, a lot of activities by which our tourists can enjoy. So I invite you all to visit these destinations once the pandemic is over. Okay. And infrastructure, it consists of all undergo and underground and surface developmental construction, such as water supply system, sewage disposal system, gas lines, electrical and communication systems, drainage systems, and other constructed facilities, such as highways, airports, railroads, roads, drives, parking lots, park, night lighting, marinas and dock facilities, bus and train stations, facilities, and similar tourist service installations. All right. So looking back many years ago, um, Philippines is not Philippines as uh, what we see Philippines now. We are very uh, fortunate with the Build, Build, Build program because there has been a lot of infrastructural projects that uh, we have seen, we've heard on the news. You see that um, there's uh, a lot of newly repaired roads, or we see this very, very often, most especially during the time of election, that there's a lot of road repairs, although that the roads are still in good condition. Um, However, I hope that the intention of, of this is truly for the development of, of the infrastructural needs of the different municipalities and it shall aid and um, mobilize or ease um, the traffic condition in the Philippines. And also, we are very fortunate. Also, we've seen a lot of um, projects related to um, the airport construction. Recently, we have uh, seen the, the launching of the, the newly constructed Clark International Airport as featured in the recently concluded Miss Universe Philippines 2021 preliminaries. And also in the first week of October, I have heard on the news of the of the completion of the, the Bicol International Airport, which is the first international airport in the south of Manila. So these um, projects are a testament of um, improvement, all right, economic improvement, and it shall also aid in the further development of our country and uh, the municipality. So please note that infrastructural projects okay or infrastructural supply would include the following the water supply so the government should ensure that there is a sufficient supply of water resource there's potable water we are very fortunate that we have uh, potable water but in some other parts of the country it's uh, very hard to find uh, potable water we have to have power generation and transmission, telecommunications, which is very um, important since we are on the 21st century and we have to have a very good and strong internet connection. Waste management and hazardous waste removal and storage or, or sewage, of course. Healthcare, highways, streets and roads and bridges. Transportation terminal, including um we we have to consider the different modes of transportation whether the transportation is by land air or sea and all of these facilities has to be in good condition to to have a very good or smooth flow of um tra or traffic of the uh, different uh modalities of transportation and of course security okay Next um, tourism supply is superstructure. It is the above ground facility services, such as airport buildings, passenger traffic terminals, hotels, motels, resorts, restaurants, shopping centers, places of entertainment, museums, stores, and similar structures. All right. Um, I would like to focus on the different 
types of accommodation because it's important for you as HM student to know these different types of accommodation. And we should not limit ourselves to the concept of what is only available is the, the very popular, which is hotel. But uh, we have to uh, make ourselves um, aware of the various accommodation uh, facilities that um, our the hospitality industry can offer. And the first one is hotels. There are different ways to classify a hotel. It can be as, um, classified as two location. It can either be a city center hotel, suburban hotel, airport hotel, meaning to say that the, that the hotel is situated near the airport to, to accommodate the, the travelers. Um, highway hotel, meaning to say it's uh, situated near the highway and also of a uh, resort hotel. As to the type of guest, hotels can be classified as a commercial hotel, meaning to say for commercial use, convention hotel to accommodate um, guests in the convention industry because it's uh, the, the, the mice industry is uh, very active. However, because of the pandemic, it was... Uh, put on hold but pre-pandemic uh there is a greater market for um for the mice uh goers and of course resort hotel as to the price hotels can be classified as economy or budget hotel standard or mid-scale and of course first class or deluxe hotel and we are very much aware that hotels are also classified or rated um, using the five-star rating, and this would signify their level of service that they are uh, giving or and also the availability of the different uh, facilities available in the hotel, the, the number of rooms available for use. So those are the, the factors. But... Uh, in, in some other countries, they, there's a seven-star hotel such as the Burj Al Arab and, and, and that actually evokes luxury because um, when you look around the hotel, you see gold everywhere. The second type of accommodation is condominium and these are the individual dwelling unit owned by an individual but the management and services are handled and by an independent company. Of course, we're, we're aware uh, and familiar with condominium. Usually, these are high-rise buildings situated in, in the metro area or highly urbanized area. Motels, these are also known as motor hotel or motorist hotel, and they are located usually near highway so that it's highly visible to motorists, okay? But uh, let's not close our perspective that motels are usually the place to, to do the, you know, and we know the, the popular uh, motel facility, you know, the logo with like this, okay? And four is INS. It's a lodging establishment catering to transient, which do not meet the minimum requirement of an economy hotel. Okay, so usually these are uh, very budget-friendly accommodations. And then the apart apartments, okay, and then the paradors. Paradors are, so this is an example of parador, okay. It's an old convent, monastery, or castles, or fortresses converted into hotels by the government and operated by a national um, tourism office. And these are very popular hotel accommodations in Europe. All right. In addition, pension or pension houses are private or family-operated tourists accommodation similar to boarding houses or guest houses okay so there's a lot of pension houses um in in baguio and also in tagaytay and in cavite okay 
and the bed and breakfast accommodations this they provide a room ba bath and hurt hearty breakfast to tourists or travelers and this is the the very popular airbnb okay which usually are uh they, they have an imagery or um ambiance of uh, a condo unit no the interior are very much like of a condo so those are the modern airbnb and then hostels they provide minimal amenities such as bunk bed and a com commonly shared toilet and bath so this is an example of a hostel okay so they they would have double deck facility all right campgrounds appeal mostly to families who travel in their recreational vehicles so <clears throat> Camping is uh, also one of the trend nowadays, and but they tried to. The trend now is a modern way of camping, and they call that glamping. I am sure that you've heard of that uh, very trendy word, or uh, putting glam in camping. All right, and then health spas are hostels and resorts which cater to individuals who go to spas and mineral springs for weight reduction or medical treatment. And then uh, last is private homes, which could also be a type of accommodation. All right, let us now go to the transportation and transportation equipment. This includes passenger transportation facilities used on land, air, and sea. And transportation is of paramount importance in developing tourism. It includes items such as ships, airplanes, trains, buses, limousines, taxis, automobiles, cog railways, aerial, tramway, similar passenger transportation facilities. All right, and that doesn't need any further explanation because that's self-explanatory. And then hospitality resources, this include the cultural wealth of an area, which makes possible the successful hosting of tourists. And examples are our welcoming spirit, attitudes of the residents towards the visitors, courtesy, friendliness, sincere interest, and willingness to serve. All right, so we have to note that different cultures would have different ways of of hospitality and also of accommodating their guests but what i can say though is that the philippines or we filipinos are very much known for our filipino brand of hospitality and that is very much evident and i'm sure that you can all agree that we treat our guests with so much respect with so much warmth and friendliness and then we treat them as family. We would provide them with fresh linens. We would provide them with, with our um, house specialty or with special food. We would have the, the finest flatwares and cutlery um, uh, to be used by the guests. However, some countries would offer flowers to their guests, perhaps in, in Hawaii. And you have to note that the very essence of hospitality, or we can trace back the, the story of the pineapple tradition, is, um, is very, or the very essence of hospitality is uh, when, when the, the pirate, no, when, when, Upon the safe arrival of the, the voyagers, they have um, placed the pineapple on, on their gate to, to signify of their safe arrival. And everyone who sees it is uh, welcome and that there's uh, food and wine available and that they are very much happy to share their, their stories of their safe voyage. All right, um, I guess that's uh, the end of my discussion. I have pretty much covered the five elements of the tourism supply and components. 
So thank you very much. And on our next discussion, we would be having the Tourism and Hospitality Organization. So thank you very much, everyone. If you do like this content, don't forget to um, subscribe to my channel and hit on that notification bell for more updates. Again, this is Professor Jeremiah Elioso, and I am saying thank you very much and mabuhay. Bye-bye.